Hello guys, and today we're talking face masks. Okay, so I'm going to kind of tell you a story about face masks. So I'm looking at this article right here. No, sorry, let me back up. Already I've messed up. So recently we've been seeing things saying that we need to wear two masks or even three masks. Just mask up, mask up, mask up. So I don't wear a mask because of my asthma. I have, you know, a legal right not to. I'm provided for in the law. All right. I think that if somebody wants to wear a mask because it makes them feel better, because they think it really does help or whatever, for whatever reason, they should be able to wear your mask, wear six if you want to. If somebody like me who can't wear one, doesn't wear one, you shouldn't jump them. If somebody else thinks that there's not enough evidence that they work, um, it causes more problems than it does. There's other evidence, you know, people aren't wearing them right, so why bother? And they don't want to, then they shouldn't have to, and for those reasons. So that's my stance on it. I'm not exactly anti-mask as much as I am anti-mandatory mask stuff, okay? And I'm going to show you why, okay? So here's this study that was from last year, October, okay? And this is something that the CDC, a lot of people follow the CDC and do what they say, says they did a case study of 154 patients who tested positive for COVID-19 and they had a control group of 160, right? All right, so let me just read this. This is gonna work better. A study conducted in the United States in July found that when they compared 154 case patients who tested positive for COVID-19 to a control group of 160 partic participants from healthcare facilities who were symptomatic but tested negative. So they probably had it. These were probably false negatives. Over 70% of the case patients were contaminated with the virus and fell ill despite always wearing a mask. So always is probably in like this because, you know, they probably don't always wear it. They probably wear it most of the time, most of the day, like when they're doing their job, etc. when they're most exposed. So as in the 14 days before illness onset, 71% of case patients and 74% of control participants reported always using cloth face coverings or other mask types when in public, right? So even though they were wearing them, they all got it basically. It says, despite over 70% of the case patient participants' efforts to follow the CDC recommend recommendations by committing to always wearing face coverings at gatherings with less than or equal to 10, wait a minute, is that right? Yeah, or greater than 10 persons at home, shopping, dining, restaurants, going to office, etc., they still contracted the virus. Okay, this says, while some study notes that some of these people may have contracted virus from the few moments they removed their mask to eat or drink at places that offer on-site eating or drinking, the CDC concedes that there's no successful way to evaluate if that was the exact moment someone became exposed and contracted the virus. So basically, the that, pff, let me see who's talking. <laughs> All right, so sorry about that. That was an ad I had to stop. So this is basically saying that even if you wear a mask, you're still going to get it. All right, I'm one of those people who think that we were already exposed to it before we even knew what was going on, before we started wearing masks, before any of this, because people were reporting being ill with something that felt like the flu or a bad cold or pneumonia or things like that. But the doctors, when testing for flu and pneumonia and things like that, came up negative. So it acted just like this. I know that there are elderly people in my church who are contracting it again because it's a new, it could be because they're getting the new strain. And they're saying if this feels exactly like what they got in February, in January, you know, December. So this thing has been here for a while now. At that time, so we've all been exposed, especially if you live uh, like in any port station, anywhere where they have a major international airport, you've already been exposed to this. So... Wearing the mask, you've probably actually already even been sick with it. 
and just didn't even realize it or thought it was just a bad cold. A lot, a lot of people, 98% of people are going through it like 98, 99, I'm going to say 99, are just going through it like it's a really bad flu. And then they're coming out the other end just fine. So I'm not thinking to myself that this is anything at all. I've got elderly people surviving it. We've got proof of children born with it surviving it because I covered that before. We have all of this, okay? So now they're saying even if you wear the mask, according to their own research, it does this the mask is not going to guarantee you don't get it, right? They're saying ventilation is better. The report suggests that direction, ventilation, and intensity of airflow might affect virus transmission, even if social distancing measures and masks are implemented according to current guidance. So this is just like with anything else, any other illness. If you're in a room with someone, there's no ventilation, it's hot, it has all of these, you know, all of these um, situations where uh, viruses love to breed, then guess what? You're going to get sick. But if you had a well-ventilated home, or if you're outside, things like that, that is more likely, that is like the best scenario for you. Not being inside with a mask on. I don't know if you remember or not, but they were telling us at the beginning of this thing to stay inside, don't go around each other, etc., like that. So they either have no idea what they're talking about, which was what I think, or two, they knew about this and they were trying to keep everybody inside and to get sick with it anyway. So it just depends on what you believe. Okay, so there's that. And then still down here, Dr. Robert Redfield says the face mask is more guaranteed to protect me against COVID than when I take a COVID vaccine, which no, it's not. It doesn't, it really even doesn't. It's the distance. And I'll show you this in a second. Okay, so let's see. This is where now, again, it's coming back around that this Fauci guy is wanting you to wear two masks. Two masks are better than one, right? That's what they're saying. Infectious diseases specialists if I double masking is a logical way to curb the spread of the coronavirus. If you have a physical covering with one, one layer, you put another layer on, it just makes common sense that it likely would be more effective. So now they're telling you to, to double mask it up, which for me is even double worse. I can't do that. That will kill me, um, especially if I'm made to do it. So this is what the CDC talks about as far as masks, right? They're also saying two or more layers to completely cover all of your breathing apparatus and it needs to fit snugly so nothing can come out the ends, right? Um, they can't have exhaust valves and you're not allowed to have N95 respirator or surgical masks. They don't want you doing that. That right there, that N95 and all of this mask stuff has been what they've always said is the best one and they do not want you to have it they want that left for other people but not you right so you can't have the best but you can have just something that makes you feel a little bit better right these mask shields that people are accepting i can't wear that as an asthmatic and they're saying don't wear them even though earlier they were saying it's fine you can wear a face shield <laughs> it changes constantly they don't know Yes, okay. Um, they're also saying not to put these masks on two-year-olds. Two years old and younger. Let me see if I can find that. Ah, I just read it. Okay, anyway. Two years old and younger, you don't have to have a face mask. And I see people putting face masks on their two years. Two-year-old children, their one-year-old kids, stuff like that. It's crazy. So here's what, so here's another, here's what I wanted to go to next. Okay. So there's, so, so far we've got masks do, they're saying they definitely work, but you can't have the best one. It has to be cloth one. They're saying that, you know, you should just double mask it up to do this. Now my point has always been if water, these droplets are like millimeter, millimeter, they're so small that you can't see them, right? If water can go through, through this, a mask, you're not protected. This is not stopping this stuff from happening, right? So I found this video. I'm going to see if I can do this. Let me see here. Let me change this around a bit so I can get this 
to fit in this window a bit better so you can see this. And this is a, we'll just do it like that. That'll be nice and easy. This is a video about what they, how, an experiment that they did, right? So let's just let this play. The guidance at the beginning of the pandemic, Dr. Matthew Kaltrum from Mayo Clinic admits, was confusing. Do six feet somehow magical? How much do masks really help? So Mayo Clinic engineered a study to measure the effectiveness of masks and social distancing from a practical standpoint. We simulated how people would be working together, maybe eating lunch together. So we actually measured what that interaction looked like in terms of particle transmission. Okay, so did you see all of that come out of that mask? These masks don't protect us. All right, it stops us from shooting it right at each other, but it doesn't stop any of anything from getting out. So if it's not going to stop it from getting out, it you can it can totally go in. Look at, I wish I could do this. Let me see if I can do this. So they they use sort of like a mist basically, which is supposed to um, help this. So this is going out all the way to here. If you've ever been around someone smoking, they don't have to point at you. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to eject or anything like that. They don't have to, you know, push it out of their lungs for it to get to you when you're six feet away from them, right? So if you look at this, this mist fills the entire area around this person. Okay. So that being the case, when you look at this, if it comes out, from your mask it's going to go into someone else's mask it's not it's it's at the very least going to land on it okay their whole thing is you can't touch the mask at all you can't do this that and the other but people are touching them all the time this is another reason why i say they don't work it's not so much it's one it's coming right out you can see it it's just and they'll show you the difference here in a second it's coming right out i mean there's your proof for you right there Two, people are touching them, they're setting them down, they're not washing them, they're going other places with them. Uh, one article I read went through a thing where these kids were just, one person was going in with the mask, coming out, handing his mask to someone else, and going in. Okay, so this is why it's not working though. All right. So this mandate to do this is ridiculous. One, because as you can see, there's particles all over this guy, person, whoever it is. It is spreading out from around him. It's not stopping it from coming out. All right. And that's using their own science. Okay. So I don't believe that they work. I never did. I know better. Okay. So let's go on. They're going to show you like the difference, right? Okay, so at the end there, where the, that mannequin has no mask or anything, that's not really how we sneeze or cough. Most of us bend down, we put it into our, we cover our mouth with something, our hands or something. <clears throat> right? We're not going to shoot it straight out of our mouth like that. <laughs> that's ridiculous. But it proves a point as to how direct it can be. If you look, ever look at the scatter pattern of a sneeze, though, it's more, it's not like that. It's more like this. It's more like this. Okay, let me see if I can find that right quick. Oh, let me see. Sneeze, scatter pattern. Let's see if I'm right. Because that's what I remember. Okay, yeah. So it is more like what you see on the first mask. Wow, there isn't really a good one here. I've seen some stuff that is like, uh, that really shows you how much it just, 
a sneeze just goes everywhere. <laughs> it's not pointed like a like they tried to do there. Neither is a cough. Let's see here. So flow cytometry scatter pattern for identification. No, that's not it. Ah, here we go. So here you can see it, right? Somebody sneezes, this is what it looks like. So it looks more like what happens when you wear a mask. It doesn't look like what happens when you do wear a mask, right? So this is why I'm not, I'm not all for the mask. You're gonna get it whether you wear it or not. So here's even better. Let's see if they show it. Here we go. And when viewed in the right light, a sneeze can take on a whole new dimension. I mean, if you forget the fact that it is a sneeze, it's actually a pretty, pretty beautiful process. Yeah, I, I think that they're all quite beautiful. Okay, so you get the point at that at this at this stage. So a sneeze or anything else that we just naturally do looks more like what happens when you're wearing a mask and less like what happens when you're not. Okay, so how they do this scientific study matters. Okay, so these guys have a good sneeze pattern that's more like what you would maybe see in real life, okay? So, because they're, they're studying fluid dynamics, which is should also, I mean, nanoparticles you know, they flow on the fluid that is inside us. So anyway, um, so just think about that, right? It doesn't look like, and it goes down. And you think about all people who sneeze. Let's say if somebody sneezes and they don't cover it at all, it's not going to go out as far as they're saying. But then the evidence they're trying to say, they're trying to use to say that COVID, you're going to protect people if you wear a mask, still shows with a mask, this stuff just flying right out. Let me see if I can go back. Yeah. Like see it? The Even more there. Ah, there it is right there. That's what I want to look at again. Okay, play. So you see that, and that is more like a sneeze. It comes out all out here, all around, all behind everything. So this is why I don't think that Matt, even if you double up, it's not going to make a difference. We've got evidence. So here's how, uh, you know, on the final thing here, here's what I would say. If you think that a mask is going to help you because you, th you believe that side of things, then hey, go for it. If you think that, you know, more along the lines of what most other people think, sorry, hold on. <laughs> Let's see, let me just make this bigger. If you think that, if you still think that a mask is gonna help you, it's gonna prevent it, then sure, go for it, why not? But I just don't think so, and I still think I should not be made to wear two, much less one, much less any, okay? Based on what that they've shown us on this science, it just stops it from going as far out. I would concede that. But then it just goes everywhere around you this way, right? I would say that if you're going to follow anything that they said, the six foot rule probably works. And then wash your hands. I mean, I think washing your hands is common sense right now. It's been proven over and over and over again. You know, wash your hands, wash your face. If you sneeze into your hands, just go wash your hands. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. The other thing, guys, is we will get through this. I just don't, uh, you know, they said we had 400,000 of us die. And there's like, let's see, let's see if I can find this information as I close this video out. How many people are in America? Population of America. Let's do that right quick. Population of America.
let's see. This says, oh, you can't see it. Hold on. There we go. Now you can. So according to the U.S. Census data, United States is right here at 329 million, I believe. India and China are in the billions. 329 million of us. Oh, here we go. It's even up here, too. And counting, it looks like 330 million. So let's do that math real quick. 400,000 of us dead. That's not going to show it. Okay. So, four, one, two, three, thousand divided by, let's see if my calculator will even do this. Three, three, zero, eight, six, one, one, eight, seven equals do two, zero point one percent. So we're staying right at 0.1% of us dying. This thing is not what they say it is, and don't listen to it. It's just not. And I understand that for that 400,000 of those families, the people of the people who died, this thing is 100% lethal. I get it for the family and friends. However, when you're looking at this and you have, and you're looking at this for the nation, it is not. Okay, we just showed how these masks don't work the way that they say it does, right? We've shown, I showed you two different, two different perspectives. One says they totally work and it's awesome. Another one's like, it doesn't work. And the CDC says it doesn't work. And they have studies that show even wearing the mask, you're still going to get it. All right. So you can make up your own mind about that. And I think that's just where I'm going to end this today. Just, just remember guys that as they're trying to tell you, you know, you need to listen to us. You need to do this. I would suggest that you not do that. And you instead, instead, just think for yourself. Okay. Just take a minute and really think about it. Take a day and think about it. Look around you. How do people use their masks? What are they wearing? How do they wear it? What are they thinking about it? Okay. As a Christian, we're supposed to be people thinking people. We're not supposed to be people who just accept, 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 right? We're supposed to know why we do a thing it says in the Bible to know, and we have an answer for why you believe what you believe. So I take that this talking about belief in Christ, but if I have to do that for my belief in Christ, which is, you know, the biggest, most important thing, then I should do it for the rest of everything else that I have too, right? That's how I'm thinking about this, okay? So just think, it for, think for yourself, look at everything. And again, if you want to wear a mask, I'm thinking, fine, wear one. That's your choice, but it should be your choice. It shouldn't be mandated. All right, so that's where I'm going to end today. Thanks so much, guys, for joining me again today. And uh, remember to pray, read your Bible, tell somebody what God has done for you. And remember, it's all going to be fine in the end. <laughs> okay. I will see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.